Hey there, what's up? Welcome to the video. My name is Azodi, and in this first video of a series, I will share a quick overview to the fundamentals of writing a girl crush song. Girl crush falls underneath the umbrella of K-pop. I will explain important key elements to writing in this style and then dive deeper into these subjects in the following videos. If you haven't already, check out my previous K-pop overview series on this channel as that should provide you with a bit more context. to say when the exact concept of girl crush arrived in Korea but it can be roughly traced back to the 1990s with the pop singer Lee Sung Eun. The concept became much more developed during the second generation of K-pop which was the mid noughties to the early 10s particularly through groups such as 21, 4 Minute, Miss A, Brown Eyed Girls, and effects. Although all five girl groups had wildly different discographies, they each managed to package an aspirational version of womanhood. Still, a song will hardly qualify for this girl crush label if it sounds too bubblegum pop or cute. But ultimately, girl crush concepts amount to more abstract ideas of relatability, aspiration, and female empowerment. Today, some of the biggest groups you can hear are Blackpink, ITZY, Esper and Everglow. So to kick off with one major tip is to know what emotion to convey in the production. As the producer, we want to create the emotions and feelings of attitude, grit, and ferocity. If we get it right, we can create that emotional response in our listeners of, you know, hype, excitement, and energy. Something I was always taught is when in doubt, hype it up. The reason for this generally is hype tracks create A-sides or lead singles. This is good as it means it will have a music video created and it will get aired across more platforms on and offline, which ultimately will lead to more awareness of the song, more revenue and more reputation as a writer. The majority of Girl Crush songs are written in a minor key with the occasional major song or at the very least, uh, you would get a major keyed section within a minor keyed song. As you can hear, it doesn't quite feel the same in a major key versus a minor key. The groove in Girl Crush and generally K-pop is very important. Later on down the line, choreographies will be created for your song, so it's very important to get it right from the beginning. The Girl Crush sound has evolved over the different generations of K-pop, but what I found is the emotion is still similar across the board. We want our BPM to be hitting between 80 to 125. Uh, if you want to go over 125, try to make it half time. If we start to go too fast with the BPM, it's going to get harder and harder to create the choreography later on down the line. Something I always implement is whenever a section repeats, it's always good to introduce a new element to keep it interesting. So as you can see, when the verse repeats here, I introduce subtle new elements like the hi-hat and wood block to show the listener the song is, you know, progressing, but also keeps the same idea interesting. I'm presenting the old idea in a brand new way. Another win is to mute the start of the repeated section. It's good to throw a curveball and do something unexpected for the listener. Even if it's, you know, something super subtle as muting a kick and changing the bass note on the repeat. To mute any element in Cubase, hold down the right click and select the cross icon here. And don't worry, in the next video, we're going to dive even deeper inside the groove and I'll show you more. All right, the bass, yet again, just as important as the groove. 808 basses are a solid win for this genre and generally more of the modern commercial genres we're hearing today. The key fundamental things for the groove is to have the bass 
lock in with the kick. Once you've got that in place, you start developing the bass, start moving it around and seeing what feels good. As you can see here, I lock in that 808 with the kick to start. The fundamental of a groove is having that bass and kick locked together. Then, you know, you can start developing your bass idea once you have that key element down. Hooks. So hooks are very important and it's one of the key elements that the A&Rs at the companies are listening out for. They want to be able to hold on to some sort of musical element and remember it after the first listen. This is really important to get right with hooks. What we want with the hook is something simple, repetitive, catchy, easy to remember. The way that we deliver that melody is through presets and samples that sound quirky, innovative and different as they really help deliver that melody in an interesting way. We want to be able to choose a preset that is fitting the ecosystem of the track and we want something that feels good and feels like it belongs there. So what I've done is I've got this hook melody with a very vanilla preset, you know, like a piano. Have a listen. Then have a listen to the preset that I've done here. So something else we need to be careful or mindful of is these hooks tend to occupy the same sort of range as the lead vocal. And in most, if not all commercial genres, it's all about the vocal. So we're gonna to have to make a few sacrifices with the hook regarding EQ, volume, and not to mention if we make it too present and forward in the mix, the top line is gonna to struggle to create a vocal melody and they're gonna find it kind of interfering as well. And there you have it, a quick overview of writing the fundamentals to a girl crush song. And in the following videos, we're gonna dive deeper into these subjects. If you are a singer or artist who wants that K-pop inspired sound, for your own music, please get in touch via the website link below and we can talk. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something cool. And if you would like more videos like this one, hit subscribe to Cubase's channel. <laughs>